If you're sick and tired of running expensive Facebook ad campaigns and not seeing any results for your dropshipping and e-commerce stores, then today's video is going to be the video for you because I'm going to be showing you how to start leveraging Pinterest ads for your dropshipping and e-commerce stores. And Pinterest ads are 2.3 times more cheap for conversions than any other social media platform. So like I say, today's video is gonna be super helpful for you if you're frustrated on wasting lots of money on expensive ad campaigns. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your Pinterest business account and how to set up your Pinterest profile. I'll also be showing you how to install the Pinterest pixel on your Shopify and WooCommerce stores so you can start tracking conversions and tracking data for your stores to run better Pinterest ad campaigns. I'll also be showing you how you can create Pinterest ad creatives including user generated content for your ads and also product videos for your ads as well. And then I'll be showing you how to set up the Pinterest ad campaigns, including how to set up the interest targeting, all of the demographics, the spending limits, and all of those types of things. And then finally, how to read the ad data for your Pinterest ad campaigns. So you know which campaigns are performing better, which ones are performing worse, and how you can start retargeting and spending more money to try and scale your ad campaigns. So without further ado, let's jump straight into this full tutorial on Pinterest ads. Now, before we start, I just want to go over a few facts about Pinterest ads to once again get my point across as to why you might want to use them because there can be a little bit of confusion about who actually uses the Pinterest platform. So firstly, the first fact I want to go over is that Pinterest has over 450 million monthly active users. So it actually has quite a large audience base because I think a lot of people think that Pinterest is quite a small site, but it has a very large audience base that you can tap into for your dropshipping and e-commerce stores. Secondly, 60% of Pinterest users are women. So you still get 40% of people on the platform that are men. So you, depending on what product you're selling, you can always find the right type of customer. But if you do have a product that is more geared towards women, then you're definitely going to want to use the Pinterest platform. The third fact I want to show you is that 50% of US pinners frequently shop on Pinterest. So half of the people in the US are using Pinterest to actually shop on the platform. So that just shows that people have the intent to buy on this platform. So you're definitely going to want to be utilizing it for your dropshipping and e-commerce stores. The next fact is that more than 25% of the time spent on Pinterest is spent shopping. So a quarter of the time that people go onto the platform and are using it to look at different things, they are looking with the intent to buy once again. So that just goes to show that you're definitely going to want to use this platform for your social media advertising campaigns. The next statistic is that millennial and Gen Z use on the Pinterest platform is up 35% since 2020. So even if you have a product that is more geared towards the younger generation, you can still find the right type of audience on Pinterest because younger people are using the platform more frequently now. The next fact is that users are three times more likely to click over to a brand's website on Pinterest than any other social media platform. So comparing it to Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, YouTube, and all of those other platforms, Pinterest is really engaging when it comes to people actually clicking on other people's websites and on e-commerce stores and on brand websites. So just keep that fact in mind for your ad campaigns for Pinterest. And the final fact that I want to illustrate once again, which I did mention in the beginning of the video, is that Pinterest ads are 2.3 times cheaper for conversions than any other social media platform. So if you are hemorrhaging money on other social media platforms, then you might want to move over to Pinterest because the ads are so much cheaper than any other platform. So now that I have gone over that, we can finally get into the tutorial and start setting up your Pinterest ad campaigns. Now, one final thing I want to show you before we actually get into setting up the campaigns is just the Pinterest sales funnel. And I just want you to keep this in mind later on for when we actually start running the ads. Because the way the sales funnel works, and this is pretty much for any ad platform, is you go down a funnel until you make a sale. So 
all customers start as a stranger. They've never ever heard of your brand, your dropshipping or e-commerce store. So the first thing you need to do is just make them aware of your brand. And that's the first part of running any ad campaign. You're just making people aware. You're just getting your product in front of their eyes. Then they become a visitor. So if they click over to your site or they engage with your ad in some way, they become a visitor. And if they go over to your site, that makes them a lead. So a lead is basically someone that has expressed interest in your product or they might contact you or they might ask a question on your ad about your product and that's when they become a lead and then finally you want to convert those leads into paying customers so you can do this by retargeting or making offers so things like offering them a discount a coupon code things like that so like i said just keep this pinterest sales funnel in mind because we're going to go back to this later on when i am analyzing my campaign that i have run and i'm going to show you all of the data and statistics before you can start Start running any Pinterest ads for your business, you firstly need to create a business Pinterest account. So in order to do this, you can head over to business.pinterest.com and then click on create account. From here, you simply need to enter in your email, choose a password, enter in your age and click on create account. So I'm going to hit create account. And once you click on this, it's going to ask you to build your profile. So the first thing we are going to do is upload a profile picture of our logo. So I'm going to click on this. And from here, I am going to choose this square image, 1080 by 1080 pixels of my logo and hit open. Now, if you don't have an image like this, you can just go over to Canva, click on custom size, choose 1080 by 1080, and then just upload your logo. And then you simply just need to download this as a PNG file, and then you can upload it as your profile picture. Now you are going to choose your profile name. So make sure it is the same name as your website. And then we are going to enter in our website address. So head over to your website, copy your website address, paste it in here, then choose your country or region and your language and click on next. It's then going to ask you what the focus of your brand is. So choose the most appropriate one. So I'm going to choose fashion and then it's going to ask you what your business goals are. So I'm going to go for sell more products, drive more traffic and grow brand awareness. And then we're going to click on next. It will then ask you to describe your business. So we are going to go for online retail and we're going to click on next. It will then ask you which platform you use to sell products. So in this tutorial, like I mentioned, I am going to be showing you how to set up Pinterest ads for Shopify and for WooCommerce. So we are going to start with Shopify, but if you are using WooCommerce, then you can skip to the next part of the tutorial using the timestamps down below. So we are just going to choose Shopify and we are going to click on next. Now, finally, it's going to ask us if we're interested in advertising, we are going to choose yes and we are going to click on next and then it will ask you if you want to have a free sales call with a pinterest ads expert so if you do want to do this then just enter in your name and your phone number and you can click on done but for now i'm just going to click on skip it's firstly going to ask us to import our products from shopify so we are going to click on install now it will then bring us over to the pinterest app so we are going to click on add app and then it's going to ask you to log into your shopify account so just choose your Shopify account. And once you have logged in to your Shopify store, you can scroll down and click on add sales channel. It will then ask you to connect your Pinterest account. So click on connect Pinterest account. And now from here, it's going to say authorize app. So click on give access. Once you click on this, it's going to ask you to accept Pinterest terms and conditions. So click on accept. And then the final part of the setup, it's going to ask you to add your billing info so you can run Pinterest ads. Now, don't worry about this for now, because we will add this when we actually start setting up our campaigns. But as we scroll down, you will see that you've got your website claimed. You will also see you have your ad account and you will also see you have your Pinterest tag and the Pinterest tag number. Now, what the Pinterest tag, tag does, it automatically measures conversions and events on your website. So if somebody comes over to your site, it will track that click from your Pinterest ad, ad. If somebody makes a purchase, it will track that purchase. So it's really important to make sure that this is set up. So if you do have any problems, just make sure to contact, contact Pinterest support, but you shouldn't have any problems if you are using the Shopify app, just the way that we have done it. So now that we have done that, the next thing we are going to do is set up our business Pinterest account. But before we continue on with that, I am now going to show the WooCommerce setup for Pinterest for WooCommerce users. So if you are a Shopify user, you can use the timestamps in the description to move to the next part of the tutorial where I show you how to set up your business Pinterest account. So just use those timestamps. 
So if you are a WooCommerce user, you're of course going to choose WooCommerce and we are going to click on next. Now from here, you can choose if you're interested in advertising. So we're going to hit yes and we are going to click on next. And if you want to, you can sign up for a free call with a Pinterest ads expert. So you just need to add your name and your phone number. But for now, I am just going to hit skip. Now from here, it's going to ask you to install the WooCommerce extension. So click on install extension and then it's going to say welcome to the Pinterest ads manager. So we're going to hit next. And now from here, it's going to bring you to this partner integration. So from here, we are going to choose WooCommerce. And now it's going to bring us over to the Pinterest for WooCommerce page. So from here, we need to install a plugin to our WooCommerce store to connect it to our Pinterest account. So we are going to click on free download. Now from here, you will see the Pinterest for WooCommerce plugin, which is completely free. So we are going to click on proceed to checkout. And then from here, it's going to ask you to sign up for a WooCommerce account. So you can just enter in your email address, choose a username and choose a password and then click on create your account. Then all you need to do is just enter in your information to complete the checkout. Don't worry, you don't need to enter in any card details because it is completely free. So just enter in your name and your address. So once you have entered this information in, you are going to hit purchase. From here, it will say thank you for your order and we can now download the Pinterest for WooCommerce plugin. So just hit download. And once the plugin has finished downloading, we can head to our WordPress dashboard. We are going to go to plugins and we are going to click on add new. Now from here, we are going to scroll down and click on upload plugin. And then from here, we can scroll down. We can click on choose a file. Then we can choose the Pinterest for WooCommerce plugin that we just downloaded and hit open and then click on install now. Once the plugin has finished installing, if we scroll down, we can see that the plugin was installed successfully and now we can click on activate plugin. Now, once the plugin has finished activating, if we scroll down, we should see the plugin Pinterest for WooCommerce. And now if we go to marketing on the side, we can click on Pinterest. Now from here, you will see this get started button. So click on get started. And now we're going to connect our Pinterest account. So click on connect. And now from here, we are going to click on give access. And then you will see that's my site redirect me. So click on this. It will then ask us to verify our domain. So click on start verification. And then it should say verified and we can click on continue. It will then ask us to install our Pinterest tag so that we can track conversions from our ads. So this is things like page views and purchases and things like that. So you're definitely going to want to set this up. So click on complete setup. It should then bring you back to your WordPress dashboard. And from here, you will see setup product sync. You will see tracking. So you can see that all of those have been set up. And if you go to connection, you can see that you are connected to your Pinterest account. You can see that your domain is verified and we can see we have our Pinterest tag as well. So from here, we can set up our Pinterest business account. So if we go back to Pinterest, so we're going to head back to our business Pinterest account. Now, the first thing it's going to ask us is if we accept the cookie policy. So we are going to click on accept all. And now from here, we are going to click on our profile picture and we are going to set up a few more things regarding our profile. So from here, we are going to click on edit profile. So firstly, you will see the about section. So you can go and use some information from the about us page on your website just to tell your customers briefly what your dropshipping or e-commerce store is all about. So I've just copied some information from the about us section on my website. So now we can scroll down and the next thing we are going to do is change our username because you want a branded username. So if your username looks something like this at the moment, just go and type in your brand name and you can see if it is available. So you can see mine is available. If yours isn't available, you can simply just do something like underscore official, something like that to make sure there is a more branded domain. And you can enter in the email address for the support of your store as well. So I've just entered in that support address and this just helps to build trust with your customers. Also, if you have a phone number as well and a retail location, you can add this. So now we are just going to hit save. So now that we have done that, the next thing that we are going to do is spend some time just building the profile. So if we just go and click back on our profile picture and it will bring back bring us back to our profile homepage. Now from here, all you're going to want to do is start creating some pins so that it looks like you're more active on your Pinterest account. 
So in order to do this, this is super easy. Just go over to create and click on create pin. And from here, you can upload a pin. So it's just gonna take you through this little setup. We can click X on this. And like I said, from here, you can go and start creating some pins. So it's super easy to create pins. Now, don't worry, they don't have to be anything super special. You're just creating these pins, like I say, just so that it shows that you are active on the Pinterest platform. So an easy way to do this is just to head over to Canva, create a custom size 1080 in width, 920 in height. And then all you need to do is just upload some images of your products and just add them to your canvas on Canva. Then you can, once again, simply just hit download and download this as a PNG and then you can head back over here and now we can upload this. Navigate to the image that you downloaded from Canva and we are gonna hit open. Then you can add a title. So just add the title, which is gonna be the name of your product. And then you can add some extra description in this section. So you can just copy and paste this from your product page on your website and then you can just add a destination link. So just copy the link of the product and you can paste that in there. Once you have done that, you can click on select a board. You can click on create board and then you can just name it something like the name of your store and then you could just say dresses, let's say for example. So you can just categorize them in different products and then we can hit create. And now from here, once you have done that, you can just hit publish. It will then just say you have created a pin so we can click close on this. Now don't worry about adding a cover. Once you create 10 different pins, it will automatically create a cover for you from the pins you have created. Now what I recommend you to do is to create around 20 different pins and then, like I say, that will just make your account look a little bit more full. So I'm not gonna take you through that whole process because it is basically what I've just shown you. You're just going to want to do that 20 times over. So I've just logged out and logged in to another Pinterest business account for another brand that I have called Rinkas, and this is a skincare device, private label dropshipping brand. And the reason I've done that is because I'm going to be setting up the ads for the rest of the tutorial based on this brand. So as you can see, I have created multiple different pins and it has added that cover automatically. So like I say, once you have done that, you are now ready to start running some ads. So just make sure you've got those 20 pins ready. So the next thing we are going to move on to is looking at ad creatives. So I've got a few different ad creatives and I'm using different styles of ad creative for my ad campaigns. So firstly, let's have a look at the first ones you're going to want to get, which are user generated content ads. So these are basically where somebody is using your product and they're showing people how to use it and what it does. And this is really organic and builds trust. So you're really going to want to use these types of ads. So we just have a look at this ad. Sprinkle remover. So it works with three sets of LED lights, blue, red, and green to reduce wrinkles, smooth lines, and give you an overall flawless complexion. So you can see that's the first one and I will show you where you can get these types of ads in a moment. So you can see I'm really going for my target market, which is women around sort of 40 to 65, which she is. And she's just talking about what the product does and the benefits of the product. So now we have another one, which is a similar style video just from another creator. So if we just play this one. Collagen production helps skin look firmer. The green light promotes circulation and reduces inflammation. The red light smooths fine lines and wrinkles and the blue light shrinks pores and tightens skin. Professional results at a fraction of the cost. So you can see once again, she's just talking about the benefits of the product and just showing how to use it. And then the final type of ad creative, which is this, and this is just displaying the product and showing some more benefits and features of the product just in a text feature. So I'll just play this one for you. So you can see this has got that sort of professional vibe and this just gets a little bit more information across. Now these types of ads are really good to run alongside your user generated content ads because people will see different ads from your campaign. So they might see the user generated content ads first and then whilst, as they're scrolling through Pinterest, they might see this ad next. So it's good to have different types of creatives to test out. And like I say, now I'm going to show you where you can get these different types of ad creatives. So firstly, for your user generated content i have used this website called launchads.com and you can see that they do user generated content they do also
also do all different other types of ads if you are looking so they've got TikTok ads vertical video ads drop shipping ads and all of those types of things for your stores but i use them for user generated content ads so you can see the 220 dollars for an ad but i do have a code elliot 15 to get 15 percent off of your order so you can get it for a bit of a discount now obviously you can create user generated content ads just using your friends and family if you are on a tight budget but if you want a more professionally created ad like the ones i've just shown you then you're going to want to get them created using professional creators which launch ads have and they have loads of different types of creators for any type of market so whatever product it is that you are trying to sell you can find a creator so like i said i was looking for women age 40 to 65 so these were perfect for the demographic that i'm going for so i didn't really have anybody that i could use to create this type of ad so like i say you can use the link in the description and use the code elliot 15 to get 15 percent off they do all different types of user generated content ads so we've got unboxing de demonstration testimonial ads and they make it super easy so all you need to do is just fill out a survey for the type of creator you're looking for then you just go and enter in your website and they will go and send you some creators and then all you need to do is just ship them your product they do a little script for you and then after that you can approve the script they'll send you your ads using google drive and then they can also go and add these captions and these are really important because a lot of people when they're scrolling scrolling through pinterest they don't actually have their sound on so they add these captions on for you as well which is really great because this really helps the ads to stand out and this just helps the customer to understand what your product is when they are scrolling without the sound on so that is user generated content ads and where you can get them from and then we're going to have a look at these different style product ads just like this so i've used an online editor called InVideo to actually create these ads. And InVideo is really good. And if we have a look at the pricing, it is very affordable. So you can start with a completely free account. But if you do want to get access to thousands of free video templates that you can create ads with, and you can also go and get access to stock footage and 24 seven live chat support, then you're going to want to upgrade your plan. And once again, I do have a code EP25 for 25% off. So now I'm going to be showing you how you can use in video to go and create some cool product ads that you can use for your Pinterest ad campaigns. So we are just gonna hit login. And once you are logged into in video, you can actually search for product video ads. So if we just come in here, I can just type in product and I'm looking for a vertical video. So let's just hit the vertical format. And now it's gonna show me all of the ready-made templates that I can use for a product ad. So let me just hit enter on this. And now, as you can see, we have loads of free templates that you can use to create a product video ad. So there are literally hundreds that you can use. So no matter what type of product you are trying to sell, you should be able to find a right template. So just have a scroll through and have a look at the type of template that you want to use. So for the product ad that I just shown you that I'm running on Pinterest, I've used this template. So we are gonna choose this template. And now from here, I'm gonna click on use this template. Now, once the in-video editor loads, you are ready to start editing all of the scenes in the template to create a product video ad for your Pinterest ad campaign. Now it's super easy to do this. You're firstly going to want to get an image of your product and then remove the background. So what we'll do is I'm just going to drag this onto this scene and we can actually replace it with the assets that are already on the scene. So if I just drag it on here, I can hit replace and it will replace it. Now what I can do is I can just make it a bit bigger and we can actually reorder the images. So I'm just gonna bring this one to the top like that. Now, if you do want to remove the background color, let's say you've got a image of your product and it's got a background in, you can just hit remove background and it will remove the background for you from the image. But like I say, because I already have the background removed for this product, I don't need to do this. So I'm just gonna leave it for now. But that's a good benefit of having the premium plan is that you can easily remove backgrounds. Now, what you can do next is you can change all of the colors to your brand colors. So you can see, if we just scroll down, I'm using this pink and I'm also using this green color. So I'm gonna go for this green color because I think it looks more natural and this is a product where you're trying to remove wrinkles. So I think it ties in well. So we're just gonna come back here and change the colors. So in order to do this, I can just click on this background and then I can go to fill and I can just paste in the hex code of the color that I want to use. So now we can see it's like that. So that's looking good. Now, what we can do is we can actually change the text. 
So you can see I'm using a font called Quicksand on my site. So I can just head back to InVideo and from here I can go to font and I can just type in Quicksand and I should be able to find the font that I'm using on my site. So that way you're just keeping all of the branding in line and then I can go to text color and I'm just gonna change this to white. So now we've got pink clay mask. So I'm going to want to take some text from here so I can go for turn the clock back on your skin. So when you are creating these video, these types of video ads, you can just take the information from your site. So now we've got turn the clock back on your skin. I'm just gonna drag it so that it's all in a couple of lines just to make it a bit smaller and we can center align it. And then I'm just gonna make the font a little bit smaller just so it doesn't take up too much of the canvas. So we'll just make it, let's go for, yeah, we can go for 80. So now we've got that. And now I'm just going to add in some extra information in this part. So once again, I can come back here and where it says rejuvenate and lift your skin, I can click copy. And once again, I can come here and paste it in. And then I can change the font to the font on my site. And once again, I can change the color. So now we've got it like that. So that's super easy. Now you can delete any assets that you don't want to use. So you can see I've got this asset, which I don't want to use, which is like this makeup brush. So I'm just gonna click on this and hit delete. And now that I have deleted that, I can drag this image back like this. Now you can also go and change the background images. So if we just go over to image, I can actually just go and search. Let's say if I search for a leaf, I can go and search for this and I can go and add, let's say this, which looks super natural and cool. So I can go and drag this to the background. And now once again, I can reorder it. So if I just put it above here, so I'm just gonna grab it and drag it to the corner and I'll make it a bit bigger. And now I'm just going to reorder it to the back. And now what I can do is I can just drag it across the whole canvas. And as you can see, everything has come together. So now all I need to do is just make this text a little bit bigger. So let's just go for 56 say, maybe 56 seems fairly decent. And now what I can do is I'm just gonna reorder this image above the text like that. And that's basically how you can go and change all of the scenes. You can also upload your logo. So if we hit upload logo, you can upload your logo. So now I can just drag that onto here like this and I can make it bigger. So now it's completely branded to my store. So we can go like that. So now all you need to do is just go and do this for the rest of the scene. So I'm not going to do this for every single scene because I have shown you the basics, but just make sure that your branding is on point, that you have removed the backgrounds, that everything matches your brand. So if we go back to this ad and we play this, you can see that all of the branding is on point with this ad. So if we go and have a look, everything fits in perfectly and it matches with my site as well and with what the product is trying to promote. So just make sure that you've done that, make sure all of the branding is on point and you can also change the music. So luckily for me, I just stuck with the default music track because it actually fit really well with the product that I was trying to promote. But what you can do is you can go over to music and you can actually go and search through thousands of music tracks. So you will be able to find one that matches your product. You can just search in here, or you can go and have a look at the different genres. And then all you need to do is just click on to these three dots and hit replace music, and it will replace the music. So that's really handy. And then all you finally need to do is just hit download and share, and then just hit export and your product video ad is ready to start using on your Pinterest ad campaigns. So once you have got your user generated content ads and your product video ads, we can actually now go and start setting up an ad campaign on our Pinterest account. So we can head back to our Pinterest business account. I'm just gonna hit control zero because I zoomed out just to show you my page. And from here, we can go to create and we can click on create ad. It will then bring you to this ads dashboard. Now this is the basic setup for creating a Pinterest ads campaign and we don't want to use this. We want to use the advanced ad creation. So we're gonna click on switch to advanced ad creation. You will then be brought to the advanced ads manager for Pinterest and from here you can set, start setting up your first Pinterest campaign. So firstly, it's gonna ask you to choose a campaign objective. So we have build, awareness, brand awareness, video views. We have drive consideration, which is basically getting traffic. And then you have conversions. So these are the sales. Now, when you first start out with your first campaign, you won't actually be able to select conversions because you need to actually get more traffic 
before you can actually be eligible to run conversion ads. So you're gonna have to go for one of these three and I recommend to go for consideration. And this basically just tries to get people to click on your ad. Once you get more traffic and clicks, that shows that people have the intent to purchase your product and eventually you can move over to conversion ads. So we're gonna go for consideration. Then you can go for your campaign details. So this is just the name of your campaign overall. So you could say, let's say you're running a product for Mother's Day. You could say this is the Mother's Day campaign. And then you can go, secondly, what is the campaign objective? So I always like to put the campaign objective. So we're just gonna leave it as default with consideration. Now next up, you're gonna have campaign status. So you can leave it as active because you want the ads to start running as soon as you have published your ad campaign. So you can leave it as that. So now as we scroll down, you will see that you have a daily budget and you have a lifetime budget. It's totally up to you. I prefer to just run daily budgets. So you can just go for, let's say 10 pounds per day or dollars depending on what your ad account is in. So I always just go for daily. I just think it's a bit easier than having a lifetime budget. And then you can go and always turn campaigns on and off just once you start seeing how they are performing. Now you can do run continuously or run on specific dates. Once again, I just leave it to run continuously and then I go and have a look at which campaigns are performing well and I turn the ones off that are performing badly and then I monitor the ones that are performing better and try to add some more ad spend to them. So once you have done this, you can click on continue. Now from here, you will have your ad group and this is basically who are you targeting. So when it comes to naming your ad group, we are going to name it based on who we are targeting. So we'll leave this as it is for now and I will come back to the ad group name in a moment once I have shown you how you can actually target people. So as you scroll down, you will see that you have these reconnect with users and find new customers. We are not going to use these. So this is basically if somebody has come over to your brand already or if you want to upload a list of existing customers. But if you're just starting from scratch, you don't actually need to worry about this. So now as we scroll down, we will see that we want to select our own targeting options. So we are going to select this and this will allow us to go and select our own interest in keywords, our demographics and our placements, which is of course very important because we want to select who we think will be interested in our product. So firstly, it's going to ask you if you want to upload a list. If you don't have a list, then you can actually just close this. So don't worry about the audience list. So now we have the interest and keyword targeting. So this is quite important. So you can actually go and start targeting people based on the interests. So for this product, the interest is gonna be beauty. So if we just head back to the Pinterest campaign and what you can do is you can just search interests. So if I just type in beauty, you can see beauty, which is quite a broad interest. Now, if we select this, we will see the monthly active ads audience. So you want to keep it in the millions, I would suggest two to sort of 10 million if you can. So try not to go into the hundred thousands. So don't go any lower than a million because then it's going to be quite difficult to get your ad in front of people. Now, if as we go deeper into skincare, we can see that we have some smaller niches that might actually be more relevant. So for example, this one is perfect, anti-aging, because this product is all about anti-aging, getting rid of wrinkles. It could also be tie in with dark circles as well. So we could tick this, but now you can see the audience starts to get really small. So even if I leave it as anti-aging, we can see the audience starts to get really small. So I'm just going to leave it as beauty. So now what we can do is you can actually go and add keywords. And once again, I don't really recommend using this. So if I just go for users with current searching and planning intent, and if I just go and type in wrinkles, for example, now, you can see it doesn't really make much difference to the audience, but personally, I feel like adding keywords, whenever I've used them, it just doesn't show my ads to as many people. So I just recommend, if you're just starting out with your first campaign, just go for your ad interests and just go for a broad one and don't worry too much about keywords because they're not that important. This is basically what people are searching for when they are searching on Pinterest, but I like it where they can just scroll and they see your ad and it doesn't come up based on what they're searching for. So I just go for interests. So next up, we're gonna have the demographics. Once again, this is really important. So you can go for the genders. So for this gender, I'm mainly targeting women. So we are just gonna go for females. We'll get rid of male and unspecified. Then you can pick your ages. So once again, I'm just gonna go for 35 to 64. Now, you can of course choose the age demographic that is relevant to your product. So you can see 
that the audience is coming down ever so slightly. And now finally, what you can do is you can choose your location. So what I do is I basically set up an ad group based on different locations and I'll just do the same thing. So the first ad group is gonna be the UK. So what I'm gonna call this is women age 34 to 64 and then we're going to put beauty because that's the interest and then we're going to put UK so that is how you can name your ad group then I'll go and set up another ad group let's say for the US so that'll be two ad groups once for the UK and once for the US and that way I can see which country the ads are performing better in so that's how I do it I don't like to put all of my locations in one ad because I think it just gets a little bit confusing so if we go to pick specific countries you can actually just go and pick all the countries that you want to target at once so I could go and target both of these in one ad campaign but personally like I said I feel like that gets a little bit confusing so I'll have one ad group which is just the UK and I'll have another ad group which is just the US and then I might have another ad group that is Finland let's say so I'll go and run my ad campaigns that way then we have a language so you can go for specific languages I like to just choose English because my ads are going to be in English so we can get rid of all of these other languages so matter of fact you can just hit clear all and then just choose English that's the easier way to do it and now from here you can choose devices I just go for all devices and you can also choose your placements but I actually like to just choose automatic because then Pinterest will just show your ads where they think you will get the most views so I just leave that as automatic now finally what you can do is you can select the pins for your campaign so these are your creatives so you can see how you can go and select the four creatives so I've got one two three four creatives now when you are writing your ad copy just make sure that you have some good ad copy for your ads so don't just say something random so you can see for this one I've got say bye bye to wrinkles and fine lines with Rinkas. you're probably thinking I can't afford a facelift but you're wrong we've got a solution for you Rinkas is a new device that will make your skin look 10 years younger and it's only 99.99 you won't believe how easy it is to use and you won't believe how good it is how good it makes you look now when I am writing ad copy I use a tool called AnyWord to actually come up with ad copy and I have done a full tutorial on this. So if we just go over to projects, we can see we have my Pinterest ad project. And this basically allows you to go and write loads of different variations of ad copy and test them all out. And it will actually give you a score of how well the ad copy could potentially perform. And this is based on $250 million in ad spend. So it's pretty accurate. So you can see this is a pretty cool one. We've got meet the future of wrinkle removal. We've all been there. You go to bed with your face looking like it's been through a war zone, blah, blah, blah. So I've done a full tutorial on this tool on its own so check out the full tutorial on this if you want to learn a little bit more about writing ad copy for your ads but i recommend just checking out some different types of ad copy so we can see if we click on this one if we just click on the pencil this is again the future of wrinkle removal is here so i've used the same ad copy for this but if we click on this one i'm using a different type of ad copy there's a new device that will give you the skin of your dreams do you want to look like you've had a facelift but don't want to go under the knife so you can see i'm using different variations and once again for this one if we click on the pencil we can see what would your 20 year old self say if they saw your skin now and you can see this is a different style once again if time takes its toll it's time for a solution that works reduce fine lines and wrinkles stimulate collagen production easy to use takes two minutes per day limited offer get 30 percent off so you can see i'm using different types of ad copy and i'm just going to test which one works and really it is just trial and error because you might be thinking well you're trying different ad copy and different ads and different combinations like i say it's just trial and error test out different things and that is how you can actually see which ads will perform the best and also so one last thing to mention is of course just make sure that you have got the link going to your product so when I set up this pin originally you just go and paste in the link that I showed you earlier to make sure that it does link to your actual product page or to the landing page for your store once you have done all of this all you then need to do is just hit publish then your campaign will be reviewed and pending that it doesn't go against any of Pinterest policies which generally none of these types of ads should 
then your ads will be up and running. So I will come back later on and show you some of the results of this ad campaign. So I've just left this ad campaign running for a few days and now we're gonna have a look at the results. So if we scroll down on the campaign, you can see I spent 46 pound 32. I got 576 pin clicks, so people that actually clicked on my pin, and I got 232 outbound clicks. So if we just go to the outbound clicks, you can see, so just around half of the people that clicked on my ads actually clicked over to my site. So I think that's actually a really good conversion rate. People that were interested in the ad, half of them went over to the actual site to see about my product. Now I haven't made any sales just yet, and there are a number of reasons why this might be. But if we just go back to the beginning of the tutorial and we just go back to that funnel, all of these people started off as strangers. So I've just introduced the brand to them now and 232 people are interested in that brand. So they have become visitors in that funnel. And now I need to see which ones are leads. So I'll be showing you in a minute how you can go and see which people are actually leads from your ad campaign. And then finally, I can try and retarget them with an, with an offer. So maybe a discount to try and get them into paying customers and there are a number of reasons like I say that I might not have made any sales so this is a high ticket product I'm selling it for 100 pounds so generally the first time people see a high ticket product they won't buy it straight away they need to sort of mull it over they'll do a bit of research into the product so they'll go and have a look at my other social media platforms and things like that and they'll go and have a look at some of the re reviews and things like that on the actual product before they go and make a purchase so like I say I'll be showing you how I can see out of these 232 people which ones are actual leads and which ones I can actually get to convert into paying customers in a moment. So let's go and have a look at the ad groups. So I split this campaign into two ad groups and all of the targeting was the same except for the country. So you can see I've got beauty as the interest, females aged 35 to 64, and I've just duplicated that for the US and the UK. So two ad groups. You can see that the UK campaign spent a little bit more. So it doesn't always mean just because the US has a bigger audience, it doesn't mean that your ads are going to perform better in the US than in another country. So always test out different countries depending on your type of product and who you can target with it. So I could actually go and test out a few other countries, I think, for this campaign as well. But like I say, you can see the UK one performed slightly better. Now, if we go over to the actual ads themselves, we can see for the actual pin clicks, the product pin click got 27 and it got 10 outbound clicks. So people really loved this ad. And then we can see for some of my other user generated content ads, there was quite a few outbound clicks as well, which added up to the 232. Now, what I want to show you is, obviously you can see some of these ones didn't perform so well. So we can see this one, it didn't get any impressions at all for some reason, but this is the US version, but in the UK, it got the most impressions. So like I say, different ads can perform better in different countries and for different demographics. So you can see this one as well for the US didn't perform as well as it did in the UK. But the US version of this ad performed better than the UK one. So like I say, it really just depends on which ads perform better. And with these types of ad campaigns, they can always be a bit random. Sometimes social media platforms, the ad campaigns will just show your ads in different ways and they'll end up generating more impressions and more clicks. So those are the actual results. Now, in terms of having a look at which of these 232 outbound clicks are actual leads, what you can do is you can come into your analytics. So if you click on analytics and click on overview, you will come to this analytics overview dashboard. Now from here, what I always like to do is I have a look at who saved the pin. And generally people who save the pin, that shows that they've got a lot of interest in the product because they want to go back and have a look later. So that's like they're sort of still deciding whether they want to purchase the product or not. So they've saved the pin so that they can go back for it or maybe even share it with people and say, do you think this is worth it and things like that. So what you can do is you can scroll down and you will see top pins and you can click on saves. And now from here, I can see that I've got 28 saves. So I've got 13 saves from this ad. I've got 12 saves from this ad, two saves from the product ad, and one save from this UGC ad. So out of all of those 28 saves, I would say I could probably get half of those people to purchase 
just by running a retargeting ad campaign. So you can set up a retargeting campaign based on the people that clicked on your Pinterest pins. And like I say, you can then go and offer them a discount code. So that way, the first time they saw that ad, maybe they thought it was too expensive. Now you're running the ad again, you're offering them a discount code, maybe 30 or 40% off for a limited time offer only. So you're adding that scarcity to your ad as well. And that way you can get these people to convert. So go and have a look at your Pinterest pin saves, and that'll be a good indica indication into if you can actually get people to convert from visitor to lead to a paid customer. So now I'm going to show you how to set up Pinterest retargeting campaigns based on people that have clicked on your pins, clicked over to your site and also saved your pins. So that way you know how to retarget people and send them these offers. So in order to do this, you can go to create, you can click on create ad. And now from here, you can click on conversions. Now this will only become available to you once you get a certain amount of clicks like the ones that I've just shown you and you will get a notification from P Pinterest saying that you can now start running conversion ads. So you're gonna choose conversions, then you can just name it like I said before, however you want to name it. So you could just say Mother's Day campaign conversions. So let's just rename this Mother's Day conversions and we can just call it conversions. And now what you can do is you can put in your spend limit. So we'll just say 10 pounds a day and then just hit continue. Now, in order to set up retargeting, what you can do is it will say reconnect with users, retarget people who have already interacted with your brand. So you can hit select on this. And now once you hit this, it's going to say use existing list on these. Now we don't have a list at the moment because we need to create one. So you can click on create new audience list. And now from here, you can go for engagement. You can go for site visitors or you can go and upload your own custom list. So firstly, we're just gonna go for engagement because these are gonna be the people that have clicked on our pins, clicked on our site and saved our pins. So you can name your audience. So you could just call this engagement for Mother's Day, let's just say. And then what you can do is you can describe this. So anybody, anyone who has clicked on a pin in the last 30 days. You could just say something like that. And now what you can do is you will see here engagement audience type, any engagement or optimized engagement. So the difference between these is optimized engagement are outbound clicks and saves and any engagement is people that have just clicked on your pins. So if you hover over this, you'll see people are selected based on their high intent actions such as saves and outbound clicks. So when you run your first ad campaign, I recommend to get to around 500 outbound clicks because that's going to give you a better amount of people to go for optimized engagement. If you've just got around 200 clicks like I have for now, then I would just go for any engagement actions. Now it's gonna ask you for the source type. So instead of going for pin ID, we're gonna go for the campaign ID. And then what we can do is we can go to our other campaign that we were running. So what you can do is you can just open up this in a new tab. So just copy this and then open it in a new tab. And then all you need to do is just navigate to your other area. So what you can do is you can go to ads, you can go to reporting, and then from here, you can find a campaign ID from the other campaign that you ran, so from the first campaign. So once this is loaded, from here we, we will see the campaign ID. So we can copy this campaign ID and we can head back over here and we can paste it in. So now it's gonna ask us to select our domain for the outbound clicks. So we can select this and we can click on create. And now that you've chosen that audience, it will say the potential audience size is less than 10K. That's fine because we are retargeting these people. And now if we scroll down, we're gonna optimize for add to basket. So just leave that as the default because we want people to add to the basket. And then finally, you can go and choose your pins. Now, if I was you, I would go and add some extra pins for these retargeting campaigns. So don't necessarily use the same pins again because customers respond well to new creatives. So if you can create some new product ads or some new user generated content ads, that's going to be something new, fresh in their mind from your brand. And then what you can do is you can just go and retarget them, like I say. So when it comes to the actual ad copy itself, go and offer them a discount, 30%, 40% discount code for the next week only. So try and add some scarcity to that. So for the title, you can keep a similar title to what you have. And now you can say 30% off limited time only. 
So that way, the first time they've seen the product, maybe like I've said, they've been put off by the price point, well now you're offering them a big discount. But like I say, try not to use the exact same ad to retarget them because they're just going to think it's the same ad that you showed them in the first campaign. So go and create some more ad creatives using NVIDIA or using launch ads, and then you can go and retarget them with new ads around your product, offering them that discount. And that way you should be able to get more purchase conversions by retargeting these people. And then all you need to do finally is hit publish. So that is it for this tutorial. Hopefully you can start setting up your own Pinterest ad campaigns and start seeing some more sales generated through Pinterest for your dropshipping and e-commerce stores. If you have enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more dropshipping and e-commerce content. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video.